here at WWE Radio Row with the Alistair Black, who will be getting set to take on Andrade Cien Almas, NXT TakeOver New Orleans for the NXT Championship. Welcome to Radio Row. Welcome to WrestleMania Week. How's it been so far for you? Pretty good. Good experience. Yeah? Yes. What have you, uh, I know it's very early in the week, but uh, what have you got to do so far in New Orleans? <laughs> uh, I went to see, uh, I had to see Bourbon Street, obviously. I went to um, a, uh, a voodoo museum because, you know, I kind of like seeing that stuff. It's part of the culture of New Orleans. So I wanted to dive into that somewhat esoteric culture that they have, which is very rich here in New Orleans. So I went to see the uh, Madame Laveau um, voodoo museum, which is very interesting. Apart from that, I haven't really done that much because we came in on Thursday evening. So obviously it's settling in and saying hi to everyone and kind of like... Um, Make yourself familiar with how the hotel works, and because uh, yeah. it's a big hotel and um, the facilities and such. And I, uh, I'm kind of a recluse as a human being, so I, uh, I stay in my room and I read a lot. And just, um, yeah, pretty much that. Well, what kind of things are you reading then? Oh, right now, uh, <laughs> I, I guess I read a lot of esoteric. Uh, uh, um, stuff as well i've read a lot of stuff by men blasky at the moment and um I, I'm, I'm reading a book about angels and i'm reading a book about certain fallen angels and uh just keep myself busy yeah so you've got this big match coming up on mm -hmm. saturday night you've been building to this you've how long have you been with nxt now about a year year, year and a half? half okay so how's that run been for you and, and to see your progression you know through the company to this big moment you know on saturday night my progression through NXT has been um, nothing short of phenomenal. Everything I've done so far, like every every time you do something, you kind of go, well, well, it's not going to get any better, and then it gets better. Yeah. You think it's not going to get any more, and then it becomes more. You, you think to yourself, like, well, you know, we're, we're reaching a threshold right here, we're reaching a, a border right there, and then you just go straight through it, and like the next thing happened. Like, NXT is a place where evolution keeps happening over and over not just for me for but for any competitor stepping into that nxt ring yeah so when it comes to we see uh alistair black come out you have that special entrance how did that come about from a standpoint that was that an idea for yourself or somebody else how, how exactly did the entrance come together well the character itself has been something i've been doing even before prior to being signed to right uh, to nxt to wb um the entrance is a uh, is a um invention by Triple H. He felt that we needed to put the attention to Aleister Black in a different way and that's why I always say like a different light. It's mm -hmm. just a different kind of a, a different way of approaching the same thing. Um, in a time where like people seen so many things and like the attention spans of, of most individuals is short, we wanted to create something where people go, oh that's different. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty much sure that we uh, we succeeded in doing such. Do you do you get any kind of goosebumps or any kind of does it really get you in the mood once you're going through that process of yeah. going through that entrance and getting ready for the match? Yeah, it's it's interesting to, to, to feel how you go from being um, somewhat nervous to when you feel you're being raised and your music hits to completely transform into that character. Yeah, and then you had the band play for what show was that? Was that was that last year? That was me against Hideo Itami, so I think that was Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, uh, Code Orange, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was something else. Yeah, that was. I've known Code Orange for a while. Uh, they're big wrestling fans. Uh, so prior to my days coming into WB, I, I knew some of them because they used to come visit the local shows. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember very jokingly at Download, because I introduced them at Download Festival in, uh, in England, um, very jokingly, I was talking to to Jamie, the the, the frontman and drummer from Code Orange, and, and it was like, ah, oh, the next thing now is we pl we get to play you into the ring. <laughs> Three months later, here we are, you know, yeah. like, and they're playing me into the ring. So uh, funny little full circle coming around. Yeah, I was gonna say anything special with them for Takeover on Saturday? Not that I'm aware of. Well, you never know. You never know. That's 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 WWE for you. You it, never know. It's takeover. You're in the main event, so I'm wondering if there's going to be anything even on top of the entrance because mm. that entrance is just so unique, and to see people react to it, it really it really makes you stand out. 
you know, for the crowd to come up through the masses like that. Yeah. So um, let's talk about one of the other feuds before we get to uh, Andrade that you've been going through. You got to work with Velveteen Dream mm -hmm. and you got to see how that one worked out. And I thought that was very uh, interesting, the way that that storyline worked out, where it was very simplistic, the two different styles mm -hmm. in him just trying to get you to say his name and yeah. just basically the respect angle. Yeah. So what was it like uh, putting that together and playing that out with, like I said, there's, it was like little layers and just like these little things that people had to pick up on through the storyline. Um, first and foremost, like Velveteen Dream, I've said it before in a different interview, he is the Joker to my Batman. I think if there's any, if there's any been two characters that have a contrast so different, but exist on the same spectrum, it's, it's him and me. And I feel that my encounters with Velveteen Dream are far from done. Um, Dream is a prodigy of professional wrestling. He sees, absorbs, and adapts to anything he sees. I mean, he's 23 years old. He's a, he's a tremendous talent. And when, 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 when they started putting all this together, you could just see that despite the layers that were in there, it was very natural for us to react the way we did, to act the way we did, to... Um, to have this 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 competitive feud that we had to keep, to get it rolling because it didn't take much and fans saw it and understood how different the two sides were and just went with it. Yeah, it's been incredible to see how that worked out. And now you got almost coming up on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. We've seen him. It's funny because he he had such a great career before he came to WWE yeah. and everybody and it was a little bit different because he wore a mask and he yeah. was not doing it here and then we saw like this slow thing like okay when's it going to kick in and it seems like over the last probably like eight nine months we've seen him go to a different gear mm -hmm. what have, what have you seen from him you know as a performer I think the addition of uh, his mouthpiece uh, Zelina Vega has been something that has amplified him as a performer. I think she knows very well how to push his um, his buttons and uh, has brought something out of him that like the NXT fan base hadn't seen yet. She has been uh, a great addition to him and it's not something that specifically was never there because mm -hmm. I was aware of uh, Andrade before and I've seen him do that before but I feel the time in, in, in NXT it takes to evolve to that next level like i said like it's a never ending it's a never ending curve everybody breaks barriers there mm -hmm. and every match is going to be a, a better match than the match they had prior even going from 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 television to pay-per-view to live event every match you do you keep getting better and i feel that for the for him it clicked and that aggression that he has just came out yeah, in your world travels from even before uh, getting to uh, NXT, had you yeah. ever run into him before, ever worked with him before? No, 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 no. no. We've because um, I know we, you were in the UK and he's over in Mexico, but yeah. I wasn't sure. Well, we were both in Japan at the same time, but obviously working for different companies, and um, he's had a very different career path than I have. I've never worked in in in, in Mexico. He's never worked in Europe. Um, yeah. So no, we've never run it. Like we were aware of each other, but we've never competed against one another. Yeah. So before you came over to NXT, of course, Tommy and everybody saw you wrestle throughout you know, the UK and then go to Japan. How, how different of a wrestler do you feel like you are now? 180 degrees different. What's the biggest difference in your mind? I'm more efficient. Yeah. I, I feel that I, um, I feel that I, I, I'm able to make a bigger thing out of smaller details, I've become much more efficient in the ring. Yeah. What's the What's the trick to doing a perfect uh, flip into uh, sitting down, cross your legs? <laughs> what's the What's the trick? Uh, <laughs> being very uh, very limber from an early age on, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much that. Yeah. Um, I was always someone who um, I was very athletic growing up, and I was able to do all these like flippy things when. Uh, I used to love trampoline jumping. I used to love martial arts. So, as I say, did you ever do gymnastics? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was a, when I was a kid, it's uh, it's uh, obligated in uh, uh, in uh, in the Netherlands uh, yeah. when you're a kid. I think to like eight to eight eight year eight eight years old, you're obligated to do like uh, gymnastics. So that was basically the base that I had. And then I started doing trampolining, and then I started doing. Um, martial arts and obviously martial arts keeps you keep you very limber and such yeah. and 
It just kept going into my uh, adult days. It, it worked out great, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's funny how many different things get taught over in Europe. Mm. And you look at different people like Cesaro's talked about, like, he knows how to sew. And he sews his own outfits, you know, because mm. he learned that. And then you're talking about, uh, you know, athletics and stuff. It's yeah. like... Why aren't we doing that here a little bit more? <laughs> Every country does their own thing. We'd be a little bit more. Uh, we could help ourselves out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I think so. What, when it looks at the when you look at the scene outside of even NXT, like you said, you worked over in Japan. You mm -hmm. look at the European scene, see where it's at now. What do you see from from your vantage point now to see where wrestling is worldwide? I think wrestling uh, is back in that like uh, that big boom. Wrestling uh, on an independent level has definitely gained a fair share of. Uh, uh, notoriety again, uh, especially in the United Kingdom. Uh, even the companies that I used to work for, like in Germany, WXW and such, they're like, you know, the draws are are quite big. Um, the one thing I do see is like, I also see, um, I see a big growth in the amount of people that partake in professional wrestling and uh, started training in, in professional wrestling. So I think, a very important thing is to not let everything get oversaturated and uh, not let uh, everything um, get b become influenced too much. Yeah, I think I think protecting what it is right now is very important because if it goes here again too far, then it's going to go back and it takes another eight nine years to get. Right. It takes too long Maybe, for that course correction. Exactly that that renaissance of professional wrestling where it's where it's at right now, where it's almost like revived um you, you want to keep that going and you don't want to you don't want to mm -hmm. kill that so so come sunday when you're in a box wherever you're going to be and you're watching wrestlemania what are you looking forward to everything yeah there's not one thing i'm not looking forward to i'm 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 like well, what's the, it like for you watching a show though is it is it somewhere where you you picture yourself out there or can you kind of isolate yourself from it and, and watch it i think i'm very good in putting things in perspective i think i'm very good in putting um putting that thought in that like that right there is something that hopefully one day i will be but i can definitely enjoy it as a standalone thing where i can look at it as the wrestling fan in me and i can look at it as a great performance and I can look at it as the highest form of, of, of sports entertainment. So do you think you'll find time to go to the graveyards while you're here in New Orleans? So I wanted to. Um, I've tried uh, going there. Uh, when we were dri driving past from the uh, from the airport, I saw him. I saw him and I, I would really like to visit like uh, Madame LaVreau's uh, grave. Yeah. Uh, and, and some other uh, uh, notorious graves in, in New Orleans. Um, but thus far like we're doing meeting now i have to do a, a couple of other things today yeah. so maybe but i'm not sure if i have to do it i have to do it today do it sunday because there's some of those where if you go if you do or say the wrong thing you could be cursed according to some people well let's not let's not do that then but yeah <laughs> so looking forward to seeing the uh, match on uh, saturday night nxt take over new orleans uh you vying for the nxt world championship against andrade cianomas should be Thank a good you one very much thanks